We do reserve a few minutes on Sunday to discuss current trends that you'd expect from reading Bible prophecy. We consider ourselves futurists. That's a good thing. It means we interpret all unfulfilled prophetic passages as future events that will be fulfilled, uh, not as symbolic, not as uh, analogies or allegories, but real events, just like all the previous prophecies. Biometrics, artificial intelligence, cashless commerce, the manipulation of human DNA, the push for global government, the exponential growth of human knowledge, instantaneous communication, and especially the rebirth of the nation of Israel in her promised land. These are all phenomena that the Bible talks about as coming true in the last days. Taken together, the prophecies we mostly discuss are those that predict global government that will feature class, a cashless global economy that will be accessed by some kind of identifier, probably something biometric. During the future seven-year Great Tribulation, the world leader we call the Antichrist is going to be able to control every aspect of the lives of his citizens through this uh, system. Now, the mark of the beast that the Bible talks about in Revelation is when the Antichrist has been on the earth for, for at least three and a half years, and then he demands worship. That is the mark that you belong to the beast if you bend the knee to worship him and uh, if you don't, you don't receive the mark. So the system isn't the mark of the beast. So people worry, when Social Security numbers were first given out, Christians thought that was the mark of the beast. Uh, then when um, ATM cards came, you know, and the PIN number, that was the mark of the beast. And so, first of all, the, the beast, the Antichrist, has to be here. And secondly, we have to be pretty deep into the tribulation. So, um, you know, some of this biometric stuff, I mean, you might not still want to have a chip under your wrist and things like that, but that's more of a personal choice than a biblical choice. And so anyway, I came across an advance in biometrics, or at least to me it was, and it's called behavioral biometrics. Uh, it goes like this, behavioral biometrics measures and uniquely distinguishes patterns in the behavior of device users. These are habits and proclivities humans develop over time, given their interactions with their different devices. The related techniques used to capture and evaluate biometric behaviors can be extremely effective in evaluating whether the correct individual is logging into an account or whether the individual's behavior is consistent with that of a fraud. And so what it does is it monitors your phone movement, your keyboard behaviors, uh, your touchscreen behavior and your mouse behavior to determine your behavioral profile. So, for, so if you always hold your, hand, uh, you know, your cell phone in the same hand and go at it with one finger like I do, or others you know, have it like, like a shotgun you know, and stuff, they're like going fast. Or uh, my keyboard behavior is my right hand, left hand uh, does the shift key and my finger does all the typing over here on the other side. And so they'd say, yeah, that's, that's Gene. Uh, they're also going to get into gestures, just normal gestures, and your gait, how you walk. That, I don't know. I used to walk like a duck. Now I'm really lame, you know, and stuff. So I don't know how they're going to figure out. It's, ah, that's him. Uh, but, uh, you know, when you walk funny, you notice how many people walk funny. I mean, you, know, you don't, you don't want to be the only one, you know. So we all meet at Save Mart in the meat aisle. But anyway... Um, Bulgaria, you'll be interested about this because of your vacationing there, uh, but I saw something, well, I don't know what I was watching, but they were saying, uh, they kept showing these beautiful vistas and saying, go, go to Mongolia. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's not going to happen. Armona, maybe, but not our, yeah. So Bulgaria, they're going full biometric in some areas, uh, like mass events, concerts and such, no tickets, no wristbands. Everything has to do with the scans that they produce uh, on, on this. And so I assume with the gait uh, and the gestures, they'll have you in a room somewhere where you walk around or, you know, and stuff. And so all of this taken together will identify you, and what a great thing that'll be, Right because then the government will have complete control over your life, where you go, who you see, what you buy, what you drive. Um, you know, by the time everything is, when, when this is in place and everything is all electric, that's it, it's over as far as personal freedoms. However, the Lord has a different plan in terms of how things are really going to unfold. In his incarnation, Jesus proclaimed that the kingdom promised to Israel had come. When the Jewish leadership rejected him as their king, he ascended into heaven, 
the physical kingdom on earth went on standby. It's not gone. It's still promised to the Jews. It's on standby. We live in the church age. Began on the day of Pentecost, 50 days after Jesus rose from the dead. It precedes the time of Jacob's trouble, the great tribulation. The tribulation won't happen until the Lord comes and resurrects his church. The dead in Christ will rise. And he raptures living believers. He promised the church, I will keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Once we're gone, once the church is gone, God uh, spends time with Israel again towards the end of the tribu- in the tribulation, towards the end. And then we'll read about that today in our Isaiah passage, by the way. But, uh, and then all Israel will be saved. So, so God's got the plan for the future. It's not going to be thwarted by um, behavioral logistics or biometrics or anything like that. So w- mankind is pushing in this direction. And if the Lord chooses to use some of that uh, to fulfill some of his end time prophecy, he will. A lot of it will probably be stuff that we've never even thought of. Uh, But you don't need to worry that, you know, something horrible is going to take place outside of what the Lord has said is taking place in his word and what he promised us. Not that, you know, we wouldn't have trouble in this world. In fact, we will and we do, but that we won't be a part of the great tribulation. And so the, uh, what we tell you every week is, or we ask rather, are you ready for the rapture? And if not, get ready, stay ready, keep looking up because ready or not, Jesus is coming.